Hello out there, and it is full review time today with the Case Shark Tooth Flipper Knife, and this is a newer release from Case, and it's one that I already did an unboxing and overview video on, and I've got to tell you guys, if you watched that video and, uh, and saw my first impressions, you probably would think that this is going to be a very positive review today, and while the knife that's in front of you as it is just like this is one that I do enjoy and I still really like the design and it works just fine, uh, my experience with it hasn't really been the most positive and uh, it's something that, yeah, it, it sort of has rubbed me the wrong way and I have a few things to say about this knife that aren't really going to be that positive. So if you just want to get to that stuff, the, the follow-up kind of stuff, um, I'll annotate to the time that that starts uh, right here so that you can skip ahead if you've already gotten like the gist of the knife with the overview, you know the specs and all that good stuff. But I am going to go through all of that again. I'm going to go through some of the details with using the knife and how that was and um, ergos and yeah, all of the uh, the things that you need to know in any kind of review. And then we'll talk about some of the uh, the not so great stuff. All right. But getting into it, this is a design that is a case design, but it was manufactured by Southern Grind. The collaboration from them, the same way that they collaborated with the CG-01, which was my favorite knife of the year a couple years ago. Um, that's what really got me excited about this, was I saw another modern kind of case design. I assumed it was uh, with Southern Grind, but when I um, first unboxed this knife, there was no mention of Southern Grind either on the knife or on the packaging, and so I wasn't sure. Um, as it turns out, then uh, I did find out that Southern Grind did actually build this knife. And so here you have it. The expectations are super high because that uh, CG-01 that they did a couple years back was an absolute home run. And I would expect, you know, same kind of materials, aluminum, S35VN, same builder, a great classic case design. I would expect it to be excellent. And in a lot of ways, this knife really is. Let's take a look at a couple of size comparisons here. And guys, if you're uh, noticing something different with the lighting and any other kind of differences in sound, this is actually the first video that I'm filming with a new setup. So still getting adjusted to a, um, a new location here on the channel and more on that will be coming soon. But here the knife is next to the Paramilitary 2. You can see pretty similar overall length, but as you know, with the uh, blade to handle ratio with the PM2, you're gonna have a longer cutting edge on the uh, case here, right around three and a half inches of cutting edge with the case, and then just over eight inches total of overall length. So eight and a quarter about. Um, another comparison we can bring in real quick is the 943. All right. And yeah, now let's take a look at uh, some of the other aspects of the knife that are going to be very important. Obviously, we're going to be talking about blade steel and materials. Uh, S35VN is our steel here. Um, S35 is the, the steel that Southern Grind uses a lot on a lot of their knives. And um, the Southern Grind knives that I've had and the CG01 from a couple years back, uh, it's been great on. So uh, no real issues there. Is it a little bit soft? Sure, but is it easier to maintain than some of the other harder steels? Absolutely. So yep, I really am coming around to that as a steel just because of knives like this. Uh, take a look at the blade. You have a very nice stone wash. Um, hopefully the lighting, I'll be able to capture it. Really nice stone wash on the blade. So it will cover up scratches. We have a flat grind, and I'm not usually the guy who's gonna say, oh, it's super thick behind the edge, but just with how uh, small the knife is in height, um, you will have, it feels just a little bit thicker than maybe you would want. But as far as performance goes, I really didn't have any issues. Um, taking a look at the way you're going to, uh, to handle the knife and how that blade is actually gonna tie into that. So the shape of the blade is an interesting one. You've got this like clip point and a swedge in a pretty, <laughs> yeah, one other thing about the new location, I've got a uh, cat central nearby here. So sorry for that. And so what we end up with, with this blade shape is just a, uh, a very acute tip, really good for piercing, obviously, um, very thin right here at the very tip. But as you can see, as it goes back, you do have a little bit of thickness uh, and this big plunge, which 
Uh, that clip point, you know, it, it looks good. If it were any more drastic, I think it might be a turnoff just in the appearance of it. But as it is, I do like it a lot. And this big um, plunge down, it actually has a groove and it's perfect for any kind of like shaving or whittling task that you might have. So I didn't have to use it in this regard, but I mean, it like it, it seems like it's built for the thumb to sit here. So that's really a good thing. As we continue to move on back, uh, you can take a look and see all of the jimping. I talked about the jimping in the unboxing, just that some of it is recessed and useless, but there are so many jimps. <laughs> There's so many jimps here that it's actually still really functional and good and grippy jimping as well. So that's a good thing. Now what I will say just in using the knife, um, it performed well, but what I found was just my natural inclination in holding the knife was to hold it like this. Not sure why, but every time I got the knife in hand and started cutting, it was like this, and this was comfortable, and it worked well. And as I was cutting, if I just like thought about it, I'd be like, all right, yeah, let's just choke up and get a little bit more control. And what you can actually see, uh, and what I noticed as well, was just in, in general cutting, was that you know the, the cleanliness of the cuts, uh, it was a lot cleaner when I was choked up and had that kind of, kind of control here. But, you know, just... For some reason, naturally, I was going into this configuration here. Also, you know, for pull cuts, this is extremely comfortable just because of uh, where you can rest your forefinger. So, yeah, just a lot of good, um, a lot of good variation in how you hold the knife and able to get, you know, some good detail cutting because of this position right here. So that's pretty nice. Um, when we take a look at the actual blade itself and the stamping, uh, if I can get it focused. <laughs> Uh, what we have on this side right here is the Case XX logo. And then on the other side, we have the Shark Tooth name and S35VN. And that's about it. So like I said, no Southern Grind anywhere. I think like on the inside of the CG01, it says Southern Grind on the bottom of the backspacer. None of that. It is completely Case branded through and through. So we do have that. Taking a look at the knife in the closed position, let's do that real quickly. Um, it's a looker. It is a great looking knife. <laughs> I don't think, well, everybody has their own taste, but for me, there's really no debating that. It looks pretty darn good. Um, the way that it is in the closed position, you would think that maybe a little bit more of the blade would be hidden in the frame, but that's not the case. So even though it is very thin in height, you know, very small in height. It is a little bit wider, let's say, in the pocket than you might expect. All right. Let's move on back now and talk about the scales and um, those materials. And while we do that, actually, I'll grab the scale. And we'll get the weight on this guy. So what we have here is an aluminum frame. And I'm pretty impressed with the aluminum. Um, it's super comfortable, but it's also very attractive. The other configurations, as you can see, 3.52 ounces. The other configurations of the knife, um, the other colors, there is a black aluminum with the black G10, and then there's also a blue aluminum. This is actually gray aluminum. And what's interesting about it and why I picked this color, well, one, I couldn't find the blue, <laughs> let's be honest there. But, um, but the gray really appealed to me when I first saw the knife because in so many different, uh, different lighting, uh, you get different shades that pop out and it looks purple. And I really like that. And I mean, I'm sure you're seeing a little bit of that now. It just looks purple. So it does have that appeal to it. As far as the actual like feel of the aluminum, it's slick. It's not really like powder coated and textured in the way that the 940 kind of scale is where you can get that like grippiness and that extra friction. Now that said, just because of how like short it is in height, it's not really a big deal. You know, and the way that the knife locks in, you do have these G10 uh, in, inlays, but, um, and, and those actually, you know, they are grippy and, you know, this texturing here, it's good, but, I don't really think it's that necessary, to be honest. Um, just because of the way that the knife is gonna fit into the hand, you have the flipper here that is gonna give you just uh, another place to just push up against and, and lock in with. And the fingers, you see, my fingers are wrapping around to the top of the knife almost. So, I mean, I'm, I'm locking in in ways that I don't really need that, but 
it's good that it's there. It certainly doesn't hurt, but the knife would probably still be pretty good in hand even without that. Um, I think it looks good though too, so definitely a, a win and a plus right there. We do have a little bit of a curvature also to, uh, to the handle, so I do like that sort of like roundness, and it is very full, so despite the fact that it is like shorter like that, it still does feel like it fills the hand in a good way, if that makes sense. All right, as we move on back, you can see we have a, uh, a backspacer. It, it is what it is there. Our lanyard hole is separated from the clip, which is a very good thing. So we do have a loop over clip that makes it as deep carry as it could be. It's a good clip, it carries well, it is reversible. Um, it does still leave a little bit of real estate because the butt of the knife here is just gonna jut up. It's just that odd kind of shape at the back where you know, it's not going to be deep carry because that clip isn't going to loop all the way up like that. But I haven't had any issues with it carrying at all. Um, centering is very good. Lockup is very, very strong, but it's super early. All right. And now we're going to talk about the action. And the action was the big thing that I was hoping to improve when I got the knife. And this is actually where we're going to start getting into some of the negative things and really the negative experience that I've had with the knife because it all comes down to disassembly. Um, the action was something that it was pretty decent out of box, but it wasn't dropping shut and I felt like it could. And I felt that it just needed to be taken apart and it just needed maybe a little bit of cleaning and lubrication and it would be tip top, right? Um, well, let's look at the result before we get into the story of how we got the result. Um, the result is that, well, there's, there's the result. <laughs> it's drop and shut. So maybe I didn't notice this when I first unboxed the knife. But the detent is pretty weak. It's soft. Um, now that said, just because of the way that the flipper is shaped um, and how smooth the knife is, it's pretty snappy. I mean, it, it fires well and I have no problem getting it open every time. If you wanted to, you know, not fire it all the way open, it's hard, you know, and so Usually that's something where you break the detent and it flies open. That means it's a good detent. Here, it's just a case of the knife being super smooth. Um, I can actually shake this knife open. So is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, it's definitely not a good thing. But it's not a deal breaker either. It's not something that you want to see because, honestly, I like something a little snappier, a little stronger detent, yada, yada, yada. But um, I have some great knives that you can shake open, and that's just the way it is. The Benchmade Anthem is a $350, $400 knife. I can shake the darn thing open. So, you know, I'm not going to be hypocritical here and say, oh, this knife sucks because of that. I am going to say it's something that you don't necessarily want to see in a knife. But again, not a deal breaker. Something that I just didn't pick up on when I first unboxed the knife. So definitely wanted to share that with you, that this knife is very easy to uh, to just push open. <laughs> but you do have that drop shuttiness. Not sure it's gonna be that way out of box. You might have to disassemble it and that's where the biggest problem of this was, guys. And this is gonna be probably five minutes of just explanation that maybe some of you don't want, but I wanna get into it because one of the big things that I notice is that it's not just about how the knife is black and white on paper. That really matters when it comes to how you feel about it. It just isn't. Your experience with the knife and then some of the things that you've done with it and you know the, the things that you've been through with it, you know the, the, the knives that you beat up over the course of the years, you know, those knives are special to you because they have the memories, you know, and if you have a negative memory attached to a knife, well, then it, it sort of carries the opposite thing. And what I wanted to do was just take the darn knife apart in order to improve the action, clean it, lubricate, get it back going, easy peasy, right? Unfortunately, just the way that this knife was built, it uh, did not really allow for that. I had some major issues uh, as far as disassembling and, um, and getting this knife 
uh, back together. So the problem was with these screws right here and these um, female sides on the other side. So what happened was I was not able to get this knife disassembled because all of the pieces moved in unison. So let me bring back the PM2 as an example and I'll insert a picture of this knife disassembled so you can take a look at what I mean. So on this knife what we have is the two body screws and we also have these two um, housing pieces right here, basically where the, the screws are screwing into. On some knives with standoffs, right, you have screws on both sides and then you have the standoff. Sometimes if there's too much Loctite used, then when you try to unscrew a screw, then what happens is the standoff will actually rotate with the screw because the Loctite is secured that hard, right? And it happens and it's a pain in the butt and um, it makes it a little bit difficult. You have to break that Loctite seal with heat or something like that, right? But on a knife like this, the PM2, where you have these screws on each side, another thing that you can do, and what I've done a thousand times, is you have a driver on each side and then you can hold and keep the, the um, standoff from rotating with that first screw. If you have one piece here, one piece here, you can basically turn them against each other and break the seal, right? But you have to have torque screws on each side in order to enable to do that, right? This case, we do not. And so what we have is a screw that's held into the housing with a ton of Loctite. And unfortunately, there's really no way to break that seal. You know, I used every measure of heat that I could. And guys, let me tell you, I have disassembled a ton of knives in my day. All right, I'm not the greatest expert when it comes to doing it, but I'm certainly not a novice. And this is something that, I mean, I've never, I don't think I've ever seen frustration on this level before. <laughs> I've, I've never... I've never dealt with, and I've thought about a better word for it than clusterfuck, but I really can't come up with anything. It was an absolute clusterfuck trying to get this knife apart. Um, never really experienced anything like that before. And a lot of times what you'll see when you have a knife that has screws that are similar to this, or like housing pieces, right? Uh, what you'll see is they'll be shaped to the flat side, you know, so they'll slide in, they'll have to slide in in a specific way, and they can't rotate. And that's what you would expect out of a knife that comes in at this price point. We'll get back to the value and the price point in a minute. But that's what you would expect. And, and on any good knife, any good knife with good construction, you would expect some kind of like fail safe to keep stuff like that from happening. You know, so what I was doing was just trying to unscrew it and the darn pieces just this cat, guys. <sighs> We're going to do a giveaway for this cat. All right, and multiple winners because I will send him in pieces. <laughs> oh, it's not true. Don't contact PETA, damn it. <laughs> I love my cat, I promise. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so, um, so in a situation like this, you know, the thing's rotating, you don't have the screw heads on the other side in order to keep that from happening. And the other thing that you don't have, since they're relatively flush, is you don't have a way to um, to hold on to them. You know, if it was a, if there was a screw head that was rounded, I might be able to get like a a, um, a set of pliers and hold on to it, like physically hold on to it and keep it from rotating. You know, so I could unscrew the screw and break that seal. Dude, I I tried blow dryer, I tried my heating implement, I tried everything I could, I couldn't do it. And I was stripping the crap out of these screws as I as I tried. What I did eventually, the thing that worked, believe it or not, is I used Loctite. And I just put Loctite on top of these screw heads here. And I let it soak in into these tiny little cracks. And I did it again. And then I did it again. You can actually see it in there. You, know, you can see it in there. I had to put Loctite in there to Loctite them outside of them to the, <laughs> to the knife, to the frame, to keep them from rotating with the screw. And then I was able to get it apart. So, I mean, really frustrating. And again, at the end of the day, like I was able to take it apart, I was able to lubricate it, I was able to get the action better. So the knife as it is, is better than it was but just the level of frustration. And the other thing, the other sort of more disappointing thing with it is that 
in the middle of this process, I was like, I'm not going to be able to get this to work. I mean, this took me days to figure out because I like the Loctite was the Loctite getting in there. Like I tried this multiple times over the course of a couple of days. I was at wit's end. I'd contacted a number of my buddies who were a lot more proficient at stuff like this than myself. And nobody had any answers for me. So over the course of a few days, I was like, I'm going to have to send this knife in to, to Case. So I get on Case's website and they have different warranty forms for knives that are from Case or knives that are from Case and Southern Grind. And I knew, again, that I'd figured out like Southern Grind manufactured this and that's probably where this is going to have to go. But it is a Case design and um, I wanted to be sure. I wanted to get confirmation since this is a brand new model. I didn't want to just ship my knife to somewhere that like wasn't prepared to receive it, you know, and wasn't expecting it and, and wasn't doing warranties on this model yet since seriously like it's a pretty spanking new uh piece and um and i sent them an email telling them the problem that i had and asking for direction and i didn't even realize it because uh you know i uh, i got everything figured out and and had it um working again and everything was a-okay and then yeah I, I looked back on it and i was like oh they never replied to my email hmm so <laughs> um I would love to be the guy who could say, no, Case is uh, is on point when it comes to their customer service and when it comes to their manufacturing and their warranty and stuff like that because I have heard a number of bad things from a number of people and I've just never had to experience it myself. And I wish I could be like the, um, the rebuttal of that argument, but as it is, I'm only confirming it because that was my experience too. And when it comes down to it, guys, we have a knife here that is around the $190 price point. And like I said, I'm pretty happy with the design and the knife that I have here and being able to use it. So it's not a uh, complete loss. But what it is for me is a knife that just is sort of soured by the experience that I had with it. And maybe that's uh, petty. Maybe that's just being a little too emotional about things. But I think that we are emotional about our things. And I think that if you have a knife that doesn't just remind you of something as irritating as this, you'll end up carrying that knife instead of this. And, and that's sort of how I feel. And uh, I'm at the point now with, with this thing where if I don't carry it, well, I'm not really going to sell it to somebody because, you know, I'm, I'm not going to drop a lemon on someone's hands, even though it is a usable knife. Like, I, I wouldn't really feel good about it, you know. And I also can't recommend it because... Even if you really like the knife at the $190 price point, I think competitive options, there are way too many knives at this price point with materials that are as good or better that unless this is a design that you're just really set on having, um, I don't know, I'd, I'd probably look elsewhere. As it is, like I said, I'm going to keep the knife and I'll probably use it and carry it and who knows, maybe over the course of time I will... Uh, I will get over being a little bit butt hurt here <laughs> about how pissed off I was doing <laughs> trying to take this thing apart. But um, but right now, no, it's just uh, it's just not something that's impressing me. And my main impression of the knife is just one of frustration and irritation because the procedure to to avoid something like this, what they would have needed to do to construct a knife that wouldn't be this difficult to disassemble. It should have been it should have been something that they did naturally anyway. You know, it wouldn't have been an extra step. It would have been what you would expect at that price point. It's just quality pieces and construction. And that's not what I think I received. All right, guys, so that's my take on it. Any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, uh, let me know down below. Really appreciate you watching and uh, take care. I'll talk with you soon.